There is no more interesting person to talk to in women's basketball than Tony Bazella, head coach at Seton Hall. He is here with us. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi there, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, reminding you to always make sure you're subscribing to us and make us your first listen every day. Um, It's not just me, of course. It's the great staff over at thenexthoops.com. We bring you women's basketball podcasts six days a week and, of course, over 100 reported pieces every single month. So make sure you're subscribed, $9 a month, $72 a year, very important to support the women's basketball media that we all know we want. And so my conversation today, I, I mean, I've been looking forward to this for the last couple of weeks. Um, when, and Tony, you probably know this, but when we go to Big East Media Day and I, I bring my mentees there and say, you know, make sure you go to Seton Hall first because Tony's going to offer you Insight quotes, it doesn't matter whether you're doing a story about the Pirates or you're doing a story about another team. It's always going to be interesting. It's a great place to start. Um, And I guess the thing I'd ask you, because you obviously are very conscious of women's basketball media coverage and it's something that you follow very closely, is it how much of that is just part of your desire to help grow that aspect of women's basketball, which is something you've been part of growing, you know, your professional life? Good morning, Howard, and good morning to all your listeners and subscribers out there. And like you said, let's make sure we subscribe because you and your um, group of amazing, talented reporters do a great job of promoting our great sport. And that is part of our job. If we don't think that's part of our job as head coaches, then we're really missing the beat on this. Our job Mm -hmm. is to promote women's basketball. I've said it in numerous ways from who we schedule, when we schedule, um, I, I've said the numerous um, times, even in our Big East Media Day, you want me to play at midnight to help promote the sport or promote the sport? And I learned that really from Pat Summit. Um, it was a quick story. I, when she was, um, you know, really building the program and someone said to her, we want to play an outdoor game and we're going to do it in Arizona. And she played Arizona State and Arizona State with with Charlie was, was very good. And you know, obviously Pat's team was, was fantastic. And someone said to Pat, well, you could lose that game because, you know, it's different elements and your kids might not adjust. She's like, my job is to promote the sport as well. If, you know, we'll be prepared, we're going to do well. And um, I, I thought that was great. And she's right. Um, we, we do need to promote the sport as much as we can. And uh, that's why I love you. I, I'm, I'm honored to be on today. And, you know, I want to help in any way I can. I, you know, I'm really big on on, on the, these young reporters getting there, especially the young female ones. We need to get more people out there and to represent the women's basketball and and all types of female sports. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And and so we're we're delighted, obviously, to have you as an ally as we go ahead and do that work. And 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 that work extends beyond, of course, um, just even the conversation. It goes to the games themselves. And I, I just think, you know, it's sort of a combination. The, the style that you play, always entertaining, always entertaining. We'll get into some of the specific player reasons why. But it also happens at Walsh. And, you know, for those people who don't know, the Walsh Gym experience, um, I know you guys had renovations. It managed to uh, become updated while at the same time have that old school feel. And, and so for me, Walsh Gym was, you know, I'm growing up hearing stories from my dad, who's a North Jersey kid, talking about the fact he went to see, he saw John Thompson Jr. play as an undergrad at Providence. So just take me through just what it's like, you think, to uh, be a coach at a place with so much history and how much you think that plays a part in the overall experience when people come, because people just rave about it when they come to see you guys play. It's a great experience. It really is. And I grew up watching Danny Calandrillo play on the old like parquet floor yeah. and raftery coaching and uh, watching it on channel 55. And you might remember that, but a lot of the listeners are like, what do you mean channel 55? It was just, you know, on the UHF and we'd have to move it. And, and I fell in love with Seton Hall. It's one of the reasons I visited. 
And then when I visited, I met a, a gentleman named Father Costa and um, I felt comfortable and uh, I just fell in love with the place and the comfortability of it. And what sells Seton Hall, it's all about the people. We have really good people here. We have great leadership with our president, Dr. Nyer, and our um, chief of staff, Pat Lyons. But our school is about the people. Um, we had Christmas tree lighting the other night and we had thousands of people come, regular students, but alumni. And I just fell in love with the people at Seton Hall. And that's why I love working here. And, you know, we have good people. And the Walsh gym experience is amazing. It only seats about 1,400. It's loud. It's acoustically crazy. You know, we've averaged over 800 a game. So we're, our capacity is 60, 65%. We get four to five sellouts a year. But the band, the dancing, the cheerleaders, you know, people like you're really friendly with, you know, all those people. I am because they make the experience so good, Howard. They're loud. They're into it. We have a very vibrant fan base. They're not just sitting there. So it's really loud. And uh, um, we have a group of young men from the rugby program that sit behind us and dress in different ways. And it's they're right on top of the action. You're right there. You know, it, it, there's no bad seat in the place. You're not sitting, you know, in a 15,000 seat arena where it's just feels empty every game there's a lot of juice a lot of energy there's a very jersey feel to be sure yeah yeah yeah, exactly yeah. and and so when you think about this team and this particular year you know you talk about scheduling your schedule has been unforgiving so far i think yeah. is the best way to put it uh you are coming off uh consecutive wins uh you beat wisconsin uh, beat them fairly handily, 83-72, a nice Big Ten win. And then you beat Georgia. And to me, as big as anything else, was the fact that the score of that game, you were able to dictate tempo against uh, a Coach Abe team, which is something that very few people are consistently able to do. Do you feel as if these last couple of games have been uh, representative of where you think this Seton Hall team is capable of going this season? Yes. And, you know, we struggled early. Part of it was our competition. Like, I don't like when coaches say, well, we didn't do this. Part of the reason we weren't able to do it is we, you know, we, we played really good teams. I mean, mm -hmm. and teams that have a lot of veteran players back. I think Princeton returned four starters. I know Columbia returned five starters. Um, so it was hard. You know, those are really tough teams. And, you know, we, 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 were, we played to the last minute. Then we played VCU, which is, you know, they played us last year. They knew us. Um, it was like playing a league game, and um, they beat us by one point. We missed a shot at the buzzer, and, you know, Beth did a really good job preparing her team. And, uh, you know, I was really down on after that game. I was just down because we didn't compete at the level that we need to compete with. And uh, mm -hmm. to the kids' credit, they took a lot of ownership, and we competed really hard against Wisconsin and, and obviously Georgia. I think the 86 points against Georgia had to be the most points against the Coach Abe team um, probably in 10 years. I don't think she's ever given up that many. And, um, you know, we, we played well. But while we were at a disadvantage, I felt playing Columbia and Princeton because they had all their veterans returning. I thought we were at an advantage playing against Georgia because we played UCF last year and mm -hmm. our kids understood the zone a lot better. And they're not as good at the zone yet because she's just new. And they're going to be great. She, you know, obviously they're, you know, a tremendously well-coached team. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, we got to turn the tables on that a little bit, um, you know, and, and, and we just played with a lot of passion, Howard, and we were desperate. We know we needed to get some wins to, to build our resume. Um, you know, we have a lot of great teams in the Big East, so we've got to keep up. And co co yeah, Coach Abe teams are like military installations. I remember seeing them back at U Albany. It's a similar thing. So I'm fascinated to see that, uh, especially even, you know, by the end of the year. Um, I, I do want to touch on Columbia and Princeton because, you know, traditionally, I feel like uh, there's a feeling like, oh, it's an Ivy League game. Oh, it's an easy one. But we know better. I and mean, we, we know that, you know, in, in Princeton's case, obviously, that is a powerhouse of a team bringing everyone back. In terms of what uh, Coach Griffith is building over at Columbia, and she's been a guest on the program, too, that is a very impressive team. You know, Jada Patrick could play anywhere in the country. And Absolutely. so many, Abby Sue could play anywhere in the country. Aston so, Davis. Do you, do you feel, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you feel as if there's going to be an understanding come March that, yeah, these are losses, but these were losses to a couple of teams that, you know, maybe the RPI is low because they're playing other Ivy League teams, but man, these are, these are two of the better teams in the country. 
Yeah, Columbia just went on the road and went at Miami. Yeah. You no, know, you know, I mean, you know, these are really good, obviously great coach teams. But this goes back to promoting the game. We had two great crowds here. I mean, the place was rocking. I mean, it went down to the last minute, last shot of the game. Um, but we were able to get great crowds, too, because – they bought fans. And when we went to Columbia, we bought fans last year. When we go to Princeton, we bring fans. So we want to promote the sport. We've gotten Rutgers back on the schedule, which was mm-hmm. very important. Coach yeah. Stringer, before she left, got us back on. And I thought that was really important as well, because while Rutgers isn't, you know, as talented as they've been in the past, they played really hard. And, you know, Coquise is going to get them going. So now that we can still play, I feel, the top three local teams in, in Princeton, Columbia, and Rutgers, I think that's great for the sport and build it up and, and, Make it exciting. Uh, you know, you know, one day I'm going to I'm going to talk to, you know, you know, um, the coaches and maybe we just do a, a four team tournament one day and really promote it one year. And, uh, you know, and, and have the four of us, which are the four top local teams, play each other. And, and that would be exciting as well, too. Um, I, I would love to see. I'd love to see there needs to be a trophy comparable to the one on the men's side between Seton Hall and Rutgers, where the wood is made from a boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, from the Jersey Shore, I think I think we definitely need an equivalent of that. Maybe maybe the trophy, the winner gets Town Hall Deli. Ah, oh, Town Hall Deli. I mean, we, we we can't get much better than that. I mean, uh, those of you who have not tried Town Hall Deli, when you come up for a Seton Hall game, it's important that you stop by and and get and get and get some of their great sandwiches they have They're, there. They they are not a sponsor of the program. They are a sponsor of my heart, mm-hmm. and I love Town Hall Deli. That's why I tell everyone who's I said. Go down, get a town hall deli sandwich, go cover a game at Walsh. Like that is the ideal evening as near as I can tell. So wait, I want to talk more about that. I want to talk more about Jersey in general, because you brought up Rutgers and, um, and I think it's an important context for people. But first, I do want to talk about our title sponsor today, which is Sweat Block. Uh, Pamela would often hide in the office bathroom every 30 minutes to dry off her armpits so no one could see the wet circles under her arms. She finally has her life back because of Sweatblock. That's not a made up thing. That is a real customer review from Sweatblock, which gives you the confidence to wear what you want without fighting embarrassing sweat. Wipes were featured and tested on the Rachel Ray Show by firefighters. So if you or someone you know is experiencing embarrassing sweat or odor, try Sweatblock. Save 20% with promo code LOCKEDON at sweatblock.com. Also available on Amazon. And just as a reminder to our listeners, we're grateful that you make Lockdown Women's Basketball your first listen today and every day. For your second listen, check out Lockdown Sports today. From the games that matter most to the biggest stories in sports, Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So in terms of Rutgers and in terms of what they mean to the overall state, you know, I agree with you. Coquise is going to figure it out. You know, She's going to have eventually a roster that has more than eight players and look out because that's going to be allowing her to play the type of team that she wants to play. How important, though, NJ.com had this uh, extended conversation about Rutgers being in the Big Ten and Seton Hall being in the Big East. I'm honestly, as a Jersey guy, trying to get my mind around it. It feels to me like Rutgers and Seton Hall really ought to be conference rivals. But how much do you feel like you guys kind of help define each other as the two signature programs here in the state? I think it's really important. I think, you know, you look at what the men's, like you said, the, with the boardwalk trophy and just the I- intensity of the game. But I felt a different intensity when we played them. And this is the first time we've played in many years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, their crowd wasn't what it will be when they get more comfortable. But it was loud. We brought, you know, well over 100 fans down there. And I think we'll continue to grow that as well. Um, I, I just think, you know, for the state. The, the two of us have got to really play each other and promote the sport and do that. And obviously Princeton does their share as well. Um, I, I just think it's important to grow the game. We talked about that at the beginning of our conversation, Howard, mm-hmm. our job is to grow the game. So we have tremendous high school teams, some of the best in the country in, in our state, great coaches, great people, um, great AAU programs. So we, we need to do, as we continue to build this and it's hard the first year, but in the second year and the third year and the fourth year, I can guarantee when we play Rutgers next year here, it'll be sold out. 
Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. I'm saying on the show, I will say the day of, the day before, the week before, we will sell out that game next year. It's on a Wednesday night in mid November. It's going to be an amazing experience. We're going to get Fox to do the game live. So um, we're growing this and we're really promoting it. Um, um, and it's important, but we need to play and we yeah. need to continue to make it a rivalry, Howard. Listen, I'm not saying we don't have to like each other, but it's got to be like, we got to win this game. Come on, here we go. It's funny. I, I, I heard an interview yesterday. Was, and I know that people think I'm crazy. Like, how could you compare? But I'm just using this as a comparison. Yeah. They interviewed the new Auburn coach for football. And they said to him, a lot of it, you know, a, a lot of the, the reason you got the job, you freeze, was because you beat them twice when you were the coach at Ole Miss. You mm-hmm. beat Alabama twice. And he goes, yeah. And if I only beat them twice um, and I don't have no more wins against them, I won't be the Auburn coach very long because I have to beat Alabama. Mm-hmm. But there's such a rivalry with the fans. Well, we need to create that. I will tell you, our men's game sold out already. Like, it, it's exciting. We're going to build it up here. I'm telling you, Rutgers will get a lot better. We will get even better. Princeton will become really, you know, will, will, will become a, a, tr- a triangle with us. And we're going to have great rivalries between the three of us. I really believe that. I, I, I do, too. And uh, listen, I also, I grew up in South Jersey. So I grew up a stone store from the Big Five. Uh, so yeah. being, you know, putting it in that, uh, that context makes sense, right? There's no reason why the women's sports rivalries have to be any different. And I feel like for a long time, women's sports was treated like, let's root for everyone. And there's a certain, I understand that, there's a certain appeal to that, but it smooths the rough edges, and the rough edges are what makes sports, I'm two Jersey guys talking here, but like it's two, that's what makes it so compelling, right? Right, Giants, Eagles, like, you know, all that stuff. Like, it's not Giants, Jets, it's Giants, Eagles. Like, you know, you know. And we grew up with that, you know, Giants Cowboys. But mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, we've got to develop a rivalry. Exactly. It doesn't have to be hated, but it's got to be like, listen, you know what? I got Princeton. I got to win this game. I got Rutgers. Tonight. I got to win this game. And us and Rutgers, especially, is two of the you know, teams in the highest conferences. It's really important. And no doubt about it. And so, so the passion I feel like on that team, you know, is is evident. But it feels most evident to me in your engine, in your 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 point guard. Lauren Park Lane. And I just want to talk about a couple of things with her game. She's obviously been very impressive early. If anything, her numbers are understating what she's capable of doing, by which I mean, she's only shooting 30 percent from three. She's historically um, been better than that. She was at 39 last year. And yet we can see the contours of the improvement. Her turnover percentage is 12.1 percent so far, which is just elite at a point guard level. I'm just curious what you've seen from her so far and whether you feel like she is on track to accomplish the things that you and she have both set out for her when we talked back on media day. We sat down after the um, VCU game where for three quarters she was non-existent and, you know, and, you know, it's a private conversation. She, she, she did a lot of it with my associate head coach, um, coach Falco, but, you know, Lauren expressed, you know, where she was at, and Coach Falco expressed to her where you need to be at and who you are and to get back to being who you are. Lauren's a pleaser. Mm-hmm. You're a wonderful human being. Like, let's just start with that. Like, we start with, oh, she's a great player. She's, you know, small. Everyone loves her. I mean, she took so many pictures, in, you know, in Virgin Islands with all these people. It's great. But people don't understand her as a human being. She's a, a great human being. She cares so much. She wants to please so much. And I think for the first few games, you know, especially Columbia and then, you know, the VCU game, she just was trying to please as opposed to, you know what, take over. You're the man. And, uh, yeah. and, 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 and she did. And, and, and I think coach, I know coach Falco's speech with her and, and coach uh, Shakina Richardson works a lot with our um, talking to her and our former great point guard who got drafted. He's now my director of basketball operations and mm-hmm. obviously a, a legend in New Jersey at, at Neptune high school. You know, they've talked to Lauren a lot, and I think Lauren's going to really take off now. These two games, Wisconsin and, and Georgia, she, she was playing much more aggressive and playing her game. So she's going to need to do it this weekend because obviously we play out Xavier and nationally ranked Marquette. So mm-hmm. we're going to have to get Lauren to to be who she is. And, I, and and she turned the corner. She had one of her best practices of the year yesterday. So I'm excited for her to take off now, Howard. I really believe that. And, and again, you know, the biggest number for me out of the last couple were the 14 free throw attempts in one yes. game, you know, yes. which is her getting 
to the rim. And, and I know we've talked about this and you and I are on the same side about this, that it is so easy for folks to dismiss her pro aspirations because of her size. And I just, I just don't buy it. I just think when you look at the production, you look at what she's able to do against bigger players and she's able to do it consistently getting to the rim is something I think she's going to be able to do because of her quickness at the next level as well. Is that how you see it too? And her ability to pass the ball. I mean, people don't know or they forget she led the country in assists last year. She had more assists than any player in the country. Just she's a tremendous passer. And, you know, she reminds me a lot of, uh, of Ariel McDonald who played at Arizona, who was a mm-hmm. community kid. Now what Ariel did was she, her body became really strong and Lauren's work, really hard in the weight room this year. So she's getting stronger. And we've had numerous scouts at our game so far. And Lauren knows what she has to improve on and stuff like that. Um, whether she comes out this year or takes the COVID year and comes out in two years, you know, a lot's going to depend on, you know, her strength and, you know, our success and um, just her having a, a, a fun time, Howard. She needs to relax and just play. Like she's always trying to please, please me, please my staff, please her teammates, please everybody. And, just be her. That's why everyone loves her. I, I gotta tell you, she's gonna really take off. These last two games, really, um, that was the way I expected her to play. And then she's joined in the backcourt by that transfer, Shaylin Hagens, who has so far been, I, I, to my mind, as advertised. She's been crazy efficient from the field. She's north of fifty percent from three already. It, how much does that uh, do, do her skills complement what Lauren's able to do um, in terms of your backcourt? So much. You know, it's funny. I, I'm very good friends with the Penn State coach, Coach Keeger. And, you know, when, when Shay was in the um, portal, I called and she was, you got to take her. You'll love her. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. she's leaving. She's like, listen, you know, she wants a, t- a different type of role than what we have here. You know, blah, blah, blah. But she's a great kid. You're going to love her. She fits perfect into your style. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, OK. And I kind of went on that. And I talked to Shay and she ended up choosing us. But she's even been better than I thought because she comes to practice every day on time. She works extra on time. Her only answers to me are always, gotcha, coach, gotcha, coach, gotcha, coach. She doesn't complain. Um, Shay, you got to go out the other team's best player. Shay, you got to rebound the ball better. Shay, you got to handle the ball better. Shay, you got to do this. Gotcha, coach, gotcha, coach. She played very poorly scrimmage Penn State and played very poorly in it. And and, and I was like, geez. And she comes in the next day. She's my fault. She goes, I was in my head. I was too psyched up for the scrimmage. It'll never happen again. And I'm like, okay, you know, I didn't, it's never happened again, Howard. Like, <laughs> she's amazing. Like, she just, she took accountability. She's a mature kid, tremendous student, never have to worry about her work, her classes or anything. Um, but she's been great. And, you know, she's shooting over 50%, like, or 50% from three. Last year, she didn't shoot the ball well from three. But we've given her a little more freedom and a little bit different type of role. And and Carolyn said she would flourish in that. And she's been right. And uh, all the credit goes to, to, you know, Shay. She really works hard. My staff works with her. But Shay's the one who comes in and does it. And I'm really proud of her. And we would, we are going to take off because of her, too. I I can't wait to see it. And I want to talk about the weekend that's ahead because it's a very interesting uh, set of matchups, especially that Marquette game. Um, First, I need to tell you about ExpressVPN. Um, You all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security, right? It's you can go ahead and unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Maybe you've run out of stuff to watch on Netflix and then you get the office on you, uh, you know, in the United Kingdom, Korean dramas, use express VPN to watch parasite off of South Korean Netflix with your Netflix subscription. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now. And you can get an extra three months of express VPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. So this Marquette game coming up <laughs> this weekend, uh, boy, uh, Coach Duffy's team is really impressive so far. I mean, I saw them uh, play UCLA super tough in a game that uh, frankly could have gone either way. UCLA won in an OT and uh, to know how good UCLA is, look no further than what they did on Tuesday night uh, at South Carolina with a lead into the fourth quarter. Um, what are you seeing? And, and I guess sort of the, the place I want to look at it most is that kind of marquee matchup with Jordan King 
Um, you know, a very different type of player. You know, I, I, I guess she's got eight inches on Lauren Park Lane, but of course, Lauren has the quickness advantage. So, like, how do you manage that uh, when you think about that particular matchup of the dual in point guards? You know, I, I, I'm not trying to be coach speak, but I've really been focused on Xavier because yeah. the, no, no, they're six and one, and coaches got them playing great. Um, but I have watched Marquette. I did watch South Carolina game last. Uh, I did watch UCLA play South Carolina, and I did watch Marquette play UCLA. So I'm familiar with Marquette, and I watched Marquette play Texas as well. Um, she's got them playing really well. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what's interesting? She's done. A, she's she, she hasn't added a lot of new pieces. She's got one or two, um, but her core has stayed the same, Howard. And they know what to do. Jordan King's taking the next step, much more aggressive offensively. They've moved her off the ball and let, and let Rose Nakumu play the point. Um, you know, um, Carlin, the forward, has played really well. Mm-hmm. Murata is a sixth-year kid, I think, or a seventh-year. She, yeah, she's year. been there forever. She would just leave. But yeah. she's a really good player. I mean that as a compliment. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Coach Tuffy does such a great job with, with putting them in positions for them to be successful. You know, Megan and I have, have played a lot of golf together at the Big East um, – um, meetings and we've gotten to know each other quite well. And mm-hmm. she's a really, she's got a great basketball mind and she's very, very, very smart in putting people where they put. So, you know, for us, they're going to defend us in, in, in a difficult way. Mm-hmm. We've got to impose our will. We played well with um, against them here and we've played poorly there. They've played poorly here and well there. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be a very difficult matchup for us. From a physical standpoint, um, we've got to use our quickness, spread the floor. Um, and they're going to really, you know, try and pound the ball, try and be aggressive against us. So it's going to be a tough matchup. You know, we need a lot of fans that game. They're 24th ranked in the country, mm-hmm. and they are. They should be. They, they've played that well. No doubt. No doubt. A clearly ranked team. And you're absolutely right, by the way. Let's not overlook Xavier with Michaela Scarlett and Taylor Smith and what they've done early on as well. It's going to be yeah. a fascinating weekend. Uh, ahead in terms of basketball, uh, I do want to kind of take this full circle. And, you know, as, as you mentioned, you, you know, you're a Seton Hall alum. You, you met your wife at Seton Hall. You know, it's in, in a lot of ways, your life has kind of led you back there. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, coached at LIU Brooklyn. You went to Iona um, and, and you had a similar um, path to Kevin Willard. You went Iona to Seton Hall, you know, on, on the men's side in Kevin Willard's case. Um, but for you to be here now and building the legacy, I mean, you didn't pass 200 wins, if I'm not mistaken, here at Seton Hall this year, right? I, I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it's not new. It's just what you're building. And I just wonder, like, what that means to you at a fundamental level, the kind of legacy that you're looking to build here at a place that has been your own since you were a teenager. Yeah. You know, it, it shaped me as, as a person and, and, you know, obviously built my family. Cause like I said, I met my wonderful wife here, who's you know an amazing backbone of our family and, uh, and, and my two kids who, you know, are, are, are tr- tremendous people in their own right have carved their out their own careers. Um, my son's in LA working in film production for um, Lucas films and my daughter's a, a successful PA um, working in, in New Brunswick at one of the top hospitals in the state. Um, and, and they've carved their own way. You know, my, my wife has been a, a great guiding factor in them, but the people here at Seton Hall helped shape me as well, Howard. Um, they've been great. Um, I can never thank our, our chief of staff, who's the AD, Pat Lyons. You know, people don't realize that at Iona, we were 14 and 70 my first three years, and Pat had just taken over as AD. Sean Brennan had hired me. He was great. He went to the private industry. And then um, I, after my third year, we were 6 and 25, whatever the heck we were. And uh, 14 and 70, he calls me in the office. I thought I was going to get fired. Um, I told my wife that night, I said, I, I, I don't know. And Pat sat me down and goes, you're doing great. And I'm like, Pat, we stink. He goes, no, you, you're building a program and, and you have my support. And um, you're going to do great here. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have to do that, Howard. And that's real leadership. I mean, le- you know, when we were winning, then, you know, we went to six WNITs after that and uh, or five or six, whatever. We went to three championship games. We were unfortunately in the Marist, um, you know, <laughs> dynasty with my friend, Coach Georges. But you know, we learned a lot. We got a lot better. We lost in the championship game three times. Um, but and the semifinals three times. Then. We lost six times them in the playoffs after that. Um, but, you know. 
leadership is about doing things when things are difficult. And Pat Lyons showed me great leadership there and has taught me a lot in that. So I try and do that here. And as we build the program and we continue to still build it, because nowadays with the portal and the transfers and everything, it's tough. Like it, it, it is. Mm -hmm. So you want to build it with, with the right people. My associate head coach, Lauren DeFacco, has been with me the whole time. Um, she's given up a lot in her life and I, and I owe her tremendously for it. Um, Jose Ribbon boss, um, played here. He believe, b believes in Seton hall. Um, coach Stanella has been with me a long time here and he's been a friend and, uh, you know, and obviously again, Shakina back, she was a great player here, but we had DD here too, who's now the top assistant at St. Bonaventure. So I, I've surrounded myself with some really good people. Um, but Howard, like not to make this question long, but it's hard to build it, but it's people like Lauren Park Lane. Sydney Cooks, you know, these kids, Andre Espinosa Hunter, who helped me recruit Sydney Cooks, Lauren Park Lane, who helps me recruit Shea Hagens and Kay Satterfield and Azana Baines and Shea Pinckney and all these other great players that we have here. You know, Maya Bembry, a local product. Those are the kids who've built this program. And I, I've said to the kids, our program's never been, be been better shape, you know, from a team, you know, uh, um, chemistry issue because of the players. I don't go in the locker room. I'm not in the locker room. They're the ones who build the chemistry and everything. They've done a great job with it right now. I'm proud of them for it. It, it, it is the case that the culture is built for a program. And if you'll forgive a point of personal privilege, uh, you know, that, uh, that Pat Lyons recognized it. Well, Pat was right. And look at what you did at Iona and look at what you're doing here at Seton Hall. And so it's, it's building something that matters. It's building a legacy that matters here in our state of New Jersey. So it's something that uh, is very meaningful to me in a way that extends beyond just what you're doing on the court. So I, I'm, I thank you uh, for what you are doing here in New Jersey. And uh, like I said, uh, there's nothing that I get more pleasure from in this uh, work than it's a ridiculous thing to call it work to uh, head on down there and uh, cover what you guys are doing on a regular basis. So Tony Bazella, thank you so much. Thank you for those kind words. And, you know, what I can just say is, as I conclude, you know, people do need to, to, to subscribe because you guys help get this stuff out. And, you know, we've got to support you. We've got to support the WBCA. We've got to support women's sports. We really do. That's our job. You know, obviously a lot more women are getting jobs and that's great. But as a man, you know, I think I, I know I'm a role model too. I'm a role model to my daughter as a father. I'm a role model to my players as someone who cares about them. But, you, you know, we need to support each other. It's women's basketball, women's sports. And you don't have to be a woman or a man, or you just have to be someone involved. And we need to support you. Um, you know, Locked On is an amazing show. I listen to it almost every day driving in to work um, it's or driving home from work a lot of times too. Um I, I can't thank you. I thank you for those kind words. And we and we need people to come to Walsh. Like it's an exciting thing. We got Marquette on Sunday, 24th ranked in the country. We got UConn coming up, St. John's coming up. Um, you know, Creighton, which is ranked 15th in the country, coming up. Like, come out and join us. It, it, you'll enjoy the experience. That I promise you. I, I can 100% endorse that and 100% agree with everything about it. Get to Walsh. You, you get. You will never be sorry that you do so. Uh, to our listeners, thank you, as always, for making us your first listen every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. I'll be joined by James Kay, the next beat reporter for the Chicago Sky. We're going to talk about Candace Parker's potential return and the free agency that is just around the corner in the WNBA. The action never stops. Uh, until then, I am host Howard Magdal, founder and editor of TheNextHoops.com, wishing you all a wonderful day. Welcome to Wallet. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. <laughs>